So in today's episode of Tech Talks and Soul Walks then, I'm going to be doing tarot readings. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tech Talks and Soul Walks with myself, Julie Kubiak. If you've been following each of these episodes, you'll know that I like to dabble in tarot card readings, oracle readings, whatever you want to call them. So today, because somebody has asked me if I could do readings on the show, that is what we're going to do. I'm going to be doing tarot readings for each of the 12 star signs. Now, normally when you go and watch a video or read in a book, magazine, online, whatever, your star sign, you would normally only read about your sun sign. And your sun sign is you. It's how you kind of project yourself to the world, but it's you as in you personally. But there are other star signs that you should actually be checking out and reading as well. When I check out my sun sign, Sagittarius, it doesn't really mean a lot to me. But why doesn't it mean a lot to me? Well, it's because my moon sign and my ascending sign also have a big impact on that. So my moon sign is Aries and my moon sign is very heavily involved in my astrology because I was actually born at night time. Now that may not be the same for you. It doesn't mean that just because you're born at night time that you're predominantly moon sign, but for me it is. But also your rising sign as well. Now when I read or watch Sagittarius, Aries and Libra all together, it kind of gives me this full picture, this full story of what's going on. So I recommend a website that you can go and check out and put your details in and find out the placements and all the other things like that to do with astrology. I'll link that down in the bottom of this video or this podcast. But what I want you to do is, um, first of all, just watch this and take a note of your sun sign. So the one that you know, the one that you would normally assume that that is who you are. So the moon sign then is about you as your subconscious. What is it you're thinking? What is it you are perceiving yourself to be? And the moon sign reading will then obviously kind of like overlap with your sun sign. And finally, then your rising sign. Well, that's how everybody else sees you. So like the external view or viewer looking at you. So they see you, you know, who is it you are? You know, is that a mask you're wearing kind of thing? So your rising sign then kind of lays on top of that. So by watching all of the three readings or reading or listening to them, you should get a fuller, rounded reading. <laughs> That's about all I can call it. So for now then, today I'm going to be doing a reading for the month of June. Now, when I do readings, they're timeless. So even if you're not watching or listening to this in June, you are hearing it or seeing it when you're meant to. So this message is for you at that point. So listen in to your sun sign first. If you don't know your moon and your rising sign or sometimes known as your ascendant sign, go away, research that, then come back in and take a listen to those as well. And I will timestamp in this video and on this podcast so you can just jump to those sections. So we're going to start off with Aries then. Okay, Aries, you've got the King of Cups, you've got the Eight of Swords and you've got the Nine of Cups. You have everything that emotionally, I want to say, that you really want or need. But there's a mental block around you, Aries. It's as though you're either not worthy or you can't have it or you don't feel like you have it. Um, but with the King of Cups, it is all about either a, a male kind of figure around you or that is the energy. Maybe you are the head of the family and you do have everything around you that you need. But there is this feeling of entrapment is what I want to say. So apart from the tarot, I'm just going to pull some extra cards to see if we can get some more information on this. And I'm going to be using the Wisdom of the Oracle um, deck by Colette Baron reed So Aries, you have yin. And this is this feeling of this unbalance that I'm picking up for you in June. So you feel that 
physically you're in one place, but mentally you're in another. But it's almost like your heart and your head are working against each other. And you've got unfinished symphony. So I want to say that there is there's some unfinished business between you and another person. Maybe it's something that you're working on yourself and therefore, like I say, it's your heart ruling your head and vice versa. Or it could be that there is unfinished business with somebody else, but you're feeling trapped. And although you have everything in um, a heart sense kind of way, mentally you are feeling, you're, you're feeling like you, you're just trapped, you can't move forwards. Um, so just pull one more card then. Yeah, Treasure Island. There is definitely something once you've finished this unfinished symphony, because the Treasure Island is the imagery on the card. It's a turtle with on its back. There is a literally a pirate's chest of gold. So I think whatever turmoil and problems that you feel that you're going through, they are your own mindset more than anything else. And there is almost like a pot of gold at the end of the, end of the rainbow is what I want to say, Aries. So we've done Aries. Next we have Taurus. So what do we have for Taurus then for the month of June? Okay, you've got three major arcana cards. That is three significant points in life, let's say. I can't think. I can't get my words out today, so you're just going to have to bear with me. You've got the Magician, the Hermit, and the Wheel of Fortune. Again, similar to Aries, I'm seeing that you've got all the tools you need to manifest and to do whatever you want to do. The Wheel of Fortune means that things are just moving. They're constantly just going round and round, which is in a good way. But you've got this Hermit where you're trying to box yourself in. It's almost like you're afraid of breaking free and showing everybody what you're capable of doing. So, pull some extra cards for you then. You've got serendipity here. You, it's got a picture of a four-leaf clover on it. You literally have everything. I don't think that you need anything else. You've got luck on your side and you are blessed. That's the other card that's come out. So, truth be told, yeah, I believe that at some point you are going to step forward and you're going to be speaking your truth. And I think this is what the Hermit card is about. Although you are bigger and bolder and brighter than what everybody believes you are, you're very closed off and you're keeping that very close to your chest. So whatever you're going through, Taurus, at the moment, there is going to be some kind of awakening for you in the month of June or whenever you are listening to this reading. So next up is Gemini then. What cards do we have for you for the month of June? So Gemini, you've got the Queen of Pentacles, you've got the Moon, and you've got the Nine of um, Pentacles as well. Very similar again to Aries reading. There seems to be some kind of um, pattern forming in here. So the Queen of Pentacles is could be a motherly figure. You're holding on to money. You've got abundance, and you are sitting in that wealth of abundance. It doesn't always have to be physical abundance. Um, it could just mean that you just have got everything that you need. You have the moon card, so it's about worries, thoughts, um, overthinking things, um, dreaming, but I want to say you are looking for the negative in it, but it's all your mindset because the nine of coins is about having everything. And even if you are on your own, don't overthink things is what I want to say to you. Um, just pull another card. Yeah, the community card's coming through. I'm sensing that although you feel that you're on your own, um, Gemini, there is a, a getting together or some kind of gathering that's coming up and it's going to quash those thoughts out of your head that you are on your own or you're doing things on your own. It's a mindset. And I do say to a lot of people in life, mindsets are your way of viewing the world. Nobody else sees them your way and you can change your mindset by simply changing your beliefs. So you then have the poised card and following that, because it just wanted to come out, is regeneration. So what I'm seeing is there's going to be some kind of um, community or collaboration if it's work and 
the poised part is where you are just about to take that step into flourishing. And the regeneration card is where the sun is coming down, it's beaming on you. You've done all the hard work, you've got all the preparation in place, and now is the time to shine. So don't overthink things then, Gemini, because everything is coming together nicely. So then, Cancer. Happy birthday to you, Cancer. Right, what do we have for the month of June for you? Okay, you have the Queen of Swords, the Queen of Wands, and the Six of Pentacles. I feel like you are not going to be taking fool gladly, taking fools lightly, whatever the phrase is, but you are having to... I will... How can I put this into a... You're almost like... Um, uh, it's not the term, but robbing Peter to pay Paul. You are moving things around to please everybody else um, because you've got the Queen of Swords one side and you've got the Queen of Wands the other. Both queens, both female energy around you, but you are kind of swaying between the two. If there are two people in your life, I don't think either one of them is the right one for you, but I do think it's about keeping the balance between those two people. It could just simply be mother and mother-in-law. Um, it could be two daughters. It could be two females in your life that are around you. You then have milk and honey. So that is almost like the happy ever after card is what I'm seeing here. There's a rainbow on it. It's, it's the nourishment card. I don't think you've got any problems. Um, and you've got then the to be fair card and followed by deep knowing. So I do think and I feel as well that the six of coins is about being fair, being just. And you know that in your heart, you know that you have everything again that you want. You're very blessed on this earth. And I do think it's going to be a very a balanced month for you then cancer and i don't think there's going to be any problems whatsoever one final card yeah building blocks you know exactly what you need to do if you want to move forward with anyone or anything and just take it forwards whatever that thing is then cancer right so the next sign that we're doing is leo nice cards leo so Leo, you have the Four of Wands, you have the Knight of Cups, and you have the Strength card. The Four of Wands can sometimes mean a new home, or it can be the uh, the wedding card, uh, the Happy Ever After card. And the Knight of Cups is about a new um, offer of love, kind of. I can't say love, love, but something that you have wanted for a while is coming into you. The strength card is your card because obviously the strength card is the Leo card and this is the sign Leo that I'm doing. Um, you have, again, such an immense happy energy around you and you're happy to share that, that love and that. Um, the strength is what I want to say. So I'm just going to pull you some card, extra cards. Okay, you've got the Yang card now. You've got here and now, and you've got time for a nap. Okay, so the Yang card is bringing in that balance, and here and now means you've got to be present in the moment, especially around the month of June, because that's when this reading's for. Time for a nap, I think you've gone through quite a lot of things in June then, Leo, and I do think it's time to just take a, um, a breather, rest and recover and recuperate. And having that balance i think you need that yang energy coming back into your life so although you have plenty to share and you're very happy and everything looks auspicious for you um just let it be known that you've got nothing to worry about for the month of june then leo okay so for virgo then virgo's three cards that you have got are the nine of coins the Three of Cups and the Nine of Wands. So the cards are showing me that you are, you've worked hard for where you are then, Virgo. And although 
there is accomplishment, you need to you need to celebrate the small wins, Virgo. That's what I want to say. You're almost at the end of whatever battle or challenges that you're going through, but you have to accept successes along the way. It's not just one final goal. You need to cherish the people around you, cherish everybody that is helping you, because even though you feel like you've done everything on your own, and you probably have, you need to at least celebrate with other people around you. Now, it's seeing, I'm seeing on the cards even, that you are one step away from some kind of completion or some success, whatever that is. So with the extra cards I'm drawing you, you've got the thinker, you've got by the book and between worlds. Taking some time out to think about your next step or the final step. But with the by the book card, I want to say you've got to do everything by the book. You've got to dot all the I's, cross all the T's, don't make any mistakes. It's as though you are in between worlds, as though you are just one step away from success is what I want to say for you then, Virgo. And you're kind of half in it and half out of it. To put it another way, if it was you'd got a side hustle and you were doing something as a part-time job, but it wasn't yet earning any income, I'm seeing that you need to take that step. You're almost there, ready to go full-time with this side hustle and make it your job or make it your full-time income because you are just so, so close, closer than you actually even realise, Virgo. So that's Virgo. Libra. So what cards do we have for Libra then? Okay, Libra, you've got the Nine of Cups, you've got the Hanged Man and the Ace of Pentacles. So I'm seeing here that although you are sitting, I want to say sitting, although you are settled, that was the word I was looking for, you're settled with what you've got, you could quite happily stay there, but you keep reflecting and thinking about other things maybe you want to do. And there's going to be this aha moment that comes in and all of a sudden the universe is going to give you another opportunity or another option. If it's regarding work, I would say there is the offer of a new job or new money coming in, but you have to think about things differently, kind of the old style phrase, think outside the box, because whatever the idea is that's coming into you, it's not, it's not really something you would have thought of. Now your few extra cards that I've drawn, you've got new life, observer and go the distance. So yes, I'm seeing this, this kind of glow up, kind of blow up almost. And there's going to be like a new you coming, Libra. Um, as an observer from the outside, people are going to be watching and wondering why or where this change has come from. It's like it's going to be a shock to everybody outside or external from you. But you are racing ahead with this new idea. It is, it is just going to give you so much new energy, vitality, excitement as well is what I'm seeing here all by simply looking at things in a different way so being settled is one thing you could stay where you are but something is coming very exciting and I'm going cold just with that for you then Libra okay Scorpio Scorpio your three cards are the ace of cups the three of wands and the king of cups if there isn't a holiday planned, I'm seeing that you are waiting for an offer of a trip. I'm seeing it being abroad. It could be a King of Cups that is coming in that will offer to take you away. Or this Ace of Cups, which is a new, a new excitement, a new, um, a new love offer that's coming in. If this person isn't yet around you, I feel that you are waiting for them, um, even if you don't know it. The new love or the new opportunities are going to be here first. You're going to feel like you are then waiting for them. If you're waiting for somebody, there is going to be this offer of move, movement, travel abroad. It could be a house move is another thing I want to say. 
but there is a lot of love. There's a lot of emotion and it's a happy time with this move or this opportunity. You have the mending card, the soulmates and no place like home. Couldn't write it really. So the soulmates, there is definitely a soulmate. If he's not around you now, she or they, um, they are definitely coming. So the mending card is about working on yourself. If you are in a happy, better place as a person, that's the kind of person you're going to attract. So you need to be the person, you need to be the energy is what I should be saying, that you would want to attract. Soulmate, definitely a soulmate. If they're not around at the moment, they are coming. And um, then you've got there's no place like home. So there is definitely some house move or relocation. So Sagittarius is my sign. Nice. So fellow Sagis, we have got the Ten of Cups, we've got the Eight of Wands, and we've got the King of Wands. So Wands are about, um, or it's a fire sign um, or fire um, element. And the King of Wands is somebody who knows exactly what they want. They've, they've strived to achieve their goals. Um, everything that sort of is what they imagined and envisaged it to be. So the Ten of Cups is having everything. It's the happy family life, you know, 2.4 children. But there is communication coming in around it all from this person. And it is from this King of Wands, so this fire sign. Then we have um, time to go, flexible and peace. So I'm feeling like there is some change in direction for you and us and I, Sagittarius. Time to go on the next stage, the next path, the next um, movement forward. But you need to be flexible with it. I'm picking up that there is some kind of movement. Um, you've got to have give and take in a relationship. And it can't all be on your own terms or my own terms. Um, having to be flexible and there's going to be some kind of peace at the end of this move or relocation is what I'm seeing. There is some feeling of moving towards a new door or like a, a new opportunity that's coming in. But there's got to be some flexibility around it as well. It can't all be on your own terms. If there is an opportunity coming up, there's got to be give and take. Once you're through that door and through onto the other side, there is peace, there's tranquility, and everything is just going to be just right. So like baby bear's porridge, just right. So that's Sagittarius. Okay, Capricorn, the cards that you have are the Page of Cups, the Four of Pentacles and the Lover's Card. You're holding on to things, maybe money, but what I'm seeing is you're keeping yourself guarded. You're, um, you've got your barriers up, even though there is an opportunity of new love coming into you. It is a new opportunity coming in and there is the possibility of it becoming fully flourished new romance is what I want to say because you've got the lover's card as well with this. You've got then the all that glit glitters, orphaned and happy, happy cards. The all that glitters card is definitely emphasizing that this lover's card that is showing up is somebody who you just think like the sun shines out of their derriere, let's say. Orphaned is going to have this moment and it's just a moment, it's what I'm feeling, where you're going to be thinking, can I really have all of this? And you're feeling very isolated as though you're just the only person going through this change. But it is all happy, happy. There is nothing that you need to be worried about then, Capricorn. Aquarius. So the three cards that you have are the world, the tower and justice. So there is going to be some shake up, let's say, within your world. Because the three cards are major arcana cards, so that's big life changes. And what I'm seeing here is there needs to be some kind of shake-up just to make you see exactly what you have in life. When I see the world card, it is like you have everything. There is nothing really that you would um, want or need for. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be materialistic things. But there needs to be some shake-up for you to see that there is balance um, because with the justice card there is um, balance and 
Liberation is what I want to say. Freedom. But let's just draw some extra cards and see if I can get some more information. You have um, cute little polar bears on here. You've got a leg up where there's a tiny polar bear trying to get up onto the larger polar bear. Uh, round and round, a message in a bottle. So yeah, the round and round is the equivalent of the world card. It is um, cyclical things. And like I say, what I'm saying is almost like a midlife crisis. But there is some message or messages coming to you around this. You're trying to strive to keep everybody together and to lift everybody's spirits up. Um, but all you need to know is whatever is going to come along that is going to kind of shake things up, it is only for the good and for the better so you can actually see exactly what you have and that you don't actually need or want for anything. You actually have it all. Finally then, Pisces, you have the Strength card, you have the Nine of Coins and you have the Three of Coins. You've been sitting on money and protecting it. You've been watching it kind of grow, build, nurture. There is um, a meeting or discussion that you're having to have with regards to this money. And you've got the strength card here. It's also a Leo energy, which is associated with it. So what I'm sensing here is to move on or to get past this stage in life, if it's not here now, it's coming up. You need to discuss things and explain things, um, how you see them. So then Pisces, your extra cards are a change in the wind, not for you and unfinished symphony. There is some kind of outpouring or speaking up that you need to do because there needs to be a change in your mindset or what you're actually going to be moving into is what I want to say. It's like a new energy that's coming up. You've been strong for too long, but you're holding on to something you need to share that those thoughts those ideas with somebody else or simply share your realization is what I want to say it's like you've had like a a wake-up call and you're now having to share this information to other people to get them to help you I'm not saying it's a depression but I'm saying it's you've put on a brave face for so long the change in the wind means that it is going to be coming it's going to be clearing out the old um making space for the new because something you're holding on to or something around you is not for you. You've held on to it for too long. And although there is the unfinished symphony card, it's like just one final kind of one, one last circuit is what I want to say, um, to go around and kind of clear and get rid of anything that isn't serving you or your higher purpose. So then, as I said earlier, if you know what your sun, moon and rising signs are, go back and listen to them for this month of June. If not, check out the link below and I'll have a link where you can go and plot your um, chart to show you all the different placements of where the planets were. And then that will tell you what your sun, your moon and your ascending signs are. So if you've liked this episode of soul walks then drop me a comment so i know and maybe i could do it maybe once a month could even just drop in an extra episode within the podcast and just do it as readings i have had some technical issues while recording this episode so i hope it has actually come together okay by the end of it if you're hearing it and seeing it then yes there were not too many problems Thank you very much for watching and listening to this episode of Tech Talks and Soul Walks and I'll see you in the next episode.